Hello, Alton here from GetBlended.org. Today I want to do something a little bit different, so I'm going to be looking at the motion tracker. Now, this isn't a video specifically about tracking. I'm not showing how to add digital makeup or 3D props into a live action footage. I'm not really qualified to go in depth into those things for just fear of getting something wrong. But what I can show you is a technique to remove the tracking markers from a shot. In this case, markers have been placed on a face so the camera can track it. And after you've solved your shot and added the 3D objects in, they would need to be removed. So this is a way to do that pretty easily. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough to get away with in some cases. And also perhaps you can come up with other ways to use the information here once you see the technique. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into it. All right, the first thing to do is go over to the motion tracking layout because that's what we'll be using. So we'll click on the layouts here and click motion tracking. And if you want to play along at home, you're going to want the footage that I'm using. So get yourself over to hollywoodcamerawork.com. Scroll down a bit and you find the free download section. When you're there, you can find the tracking plates here. And then about two thirds or three quarters of the way down, you'll find this head tracking shot. So you can download the HD plate there and extract it onto your hard drive, which I've done here. So I'll go open and find the head tracking. Now these are all the frames of the shot. So I'm just going to select the first one here and click open clip. And here we have it. So these are the dots that we're going to want to remove from the shot. But there's a couple of things that I need to do to set this up correctly. Now, first thing, you'll see that it's got a dodgy sort of aspect ratio to it. And you might think the thing to do is change the display aspect ratio here. And that would work, but this is just changing the display for us. If you wanted to track this the shot and then solve the motion, you need to set the camera up as they had it. And again, over on the, on the, on the document here, you see at the top, that these, the camera resolution that they were using has got a pixel aspect ratio in our case of 1.5 to 1. So that's what I'm going to need to put in here somewhere, but it's not the display panel, it's the camera panel here. We we'll see our pixel aspect ratio, we can just put 1.5 in there and that should give us the correct uh, aspect ratio. The other thing I want to do is set up the compositor just quickly. So we'll cover this a little bit more later on, but this is what we'll be using. So we'll go over to our compositing layout, click use nodes, and we don't need the render layers node. Uh, we can just delete that with X and we'll go with shift A, add in input and movie clip. And this takes the movie clip that we select in the drop down. It takes it from the, uh, from, from, from the movie clip editor. If we now want to visualize this, of course, we'll need a viewer node. So I'm going to go Shift A, add an output viewer, or you could just press Control and Shift and left click, and that will add a viewer node attached to uh, one of these outputs. If you hold down Control and Shift and left click, you can cycle through the different uh, different outputs there. To see what's plugged into the viewer node in the backdrop, we'll click the backdrop option. Maybe click Fit over here. But it's often, and I can use, I can move it about holding down Alt and the middle mouse wheel. Scroll in with V, uh, scroll out with V, it seems, and scroll in with Alt V. Sometimes it's useful to be able to visualize this in the image editor, which is open in the bottom left here. And I can just select the up the drop down here and select the viewer node, so that we can then quickly zoom in on different places. And what you'll see is that the aspect ratio is now wrong here. If we go back to our documents, it'll actually say that due to the the pixel aspect ratio that they've been using, we've got this sort of resolution, which is 1280 by 720, despite the fact that the plate themselves say it's 12, 1280 by 1080. So we need to set our resolution to what it says at the top, bearing in mind that particular pixel aspect ratio. I'm not an expert on this stuff. I just figured out that this is what we need to do. So we need to type in, in our dimensions in the render, render settings, 1280 by 720 we'll go up to 100% now this hasn't changed anything in our compositor but what we need to do is add a distort scale node and then change this from relative 
to render size. And this now gives us the correct aspect ratio in the image editor and the compositor, and we're ready to go back over to the motion tracker and uh, start tracking. So we're not going to have time in this video really to cover all the settings which are part of the motion tracker but what I'll try and highlight are the most important ones for our particular task here. So obviously we want to be tracking these dots. In order to add a tracking point we can press control and left click on um, on one of them and we can see the what the marker is seeing here in this little uh, little window and it's possible to fine tune the positioning there. The inner square is the pattern that it's searching for the outer one is the search area and that's actually enabled in the marker display panel this search and that's actually off by default but sometimes it can be useful to to see if the motion is traveling very fast then your search area may need to be bigger because tw between frames this the, the the point at which it's searching for might go out of the search area Whatever the case, let's see how we go with this. We've got some buttons on the left hand side. We can track forward with control T or we can go frame by frame by using alt and the right arrow. I'm just going to press control and T and see how we go. Right, it only tracked a couple of frames. I don't know whether I've hit a little bug here or what, but if we just click over here and bring it marker back on track, we'll try that again, control and T. Okay, so that's pretty good. So it's tracked all the way to the end of the shot. We didn't really have a problem there. So let's move on to the next marker. Let's try this one down here. Control and left click. And we'll just refine the position here. And we'll just press Control T. Let's see how we go. Again, I'll just place it back. Control T. Okay, so it's lost itself sort of uh, around here. Now, if you are replacing a marker in the middle of a in the middle of a, a, a shot like this, it's useful to track back just a couple of frames. So alt and left left arrow just to track back and then maybe forwards. Okay, it's losing itself again. So we can adjust some of these settings here. The correlation I'd like to try adjusting first. The higher this is, the the closer our keyframe has to match the what it's looking for. So the keyframe is the last time we place the marker, so it will always be looking for this kind of pattern. And if it doesn't correlate to this degree, it'll it'll stop tracking. So maybe we can take this down to something like 0.6 and then try tracking again. Control T. Okay, it's gone way off here, so that probably wasn't the best move. Let's clear the forward tracks and see if we can find a different um, different settings here. Let's try setting the search area a little bit bigger. So let's drag out this little arrow here and see how we go with that control and T. So again, that didn't really help. It's where is it losing itself around there. So I can maybe I can just replace the marker at this point. Alt and left arrow. Just a few frames. Alt and right arrow. Okay, it's losing itself there again. So I'm going to have to go back to around here. Let's see what else we can do. I've got alt left arrow. Track back a few, forward a few. Oh, you can see that jump there. All right. So we need to go back to before it jumped. Let's see if we can. These options here are a. Uh, we can display the different channels of the of of the thing. It's it's in order to get maybe a a, a bit of a better. I don't know, contrast between the two. So some of these channels might contain more information than the other. I can see that the green channel might be a good thing to try. So let's try that control T. All right, so that's worked uh, quite a lot better. So let's use those in the next marker that we add. So I'm going to uncheck R, uncheck B. I'm also going to change the tracking settings to blurry footage and that will give that will change our correlation down to 0.6. It'll change the search area a little bit bigger. I think the pattern size uh, stays the same. Now the pattern size gets a little bit bigger as well. So let's choose bl blurry footage. Let's place our marker and control T. 
All right, so that's tracked all the way to the end of the shot. You can see it's maybe sliding around a bit due to our correlation, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for our purposes in this case. So let's place another marker and try and track it. Okay, that's tracked to the end of the shot again. It's not sliding around too much. It's not great, but that'll do again. I don't want to spend too long on this. Let's place another marker and track it. Very good. Okay, so we've got our markers tracked now, more or less, and now comes the process of trying to remove them. So I'll show you the idea in the compositor, first of all. Let's go over to our compositing layout, and let's have a look at our clip. Now, the idea is that if I go Shift A and add in a filter and a blur, and we'll add it here, we'll change the method to Fast Gaussian, and the X and Y values I'm going to put in, say, I don't know, 15. Now, obviously, the footage gets completely blurry. Actually, let's go a little bit higher than that. Let's say maybe 20. The footage is obviously completely blurry, but what has happened are the markers have completely disappeared. So what if we can only blur the footage where those markers are? Now we can do that, and that's the process of adding a mask. So we do this back in the motion tracker. Now for each of these tracks, what I want to do is place a circle of mask there that we can then use in the compositor. So this is nice and easy actually. What we need to do on the header of the motion tracker, we can change this over to mask. And you'll see that we get a few options here. We can add a circle or add a square. Now the circles are going to do for us. So I can also do that. I place my 2D cursor over here with left mouse, shift A and add in a circle. Now I'm going to place this first circle over this point here and just make it so it's a tiny little bit bigger than the uh, than the dot itself and what we'll do now is we need to parent it to one of these tracks now I've, I've got this I can tab in and out of tracking and mask mode by the way or you can select it on the header so I've got this track active now as it's my selected track when I go back into the mask mode I can select this whole track by hovering over it and pressing L and I can use Control and P in order to parent this mask point to the track so now you should see we can move that around like that and it's following the it's following the tracker we can see down here the uh, the mask settings uh, where is it actually uh, here we go sorry the active point is the active point is the point of the mask here that we've got selected and you can see that it's uh, that it's tracking to track 004 so let's go back out of mask mode let's select another track and let's go back into mask mode shift a and add in a circle drag it over place it and control and p back out let's choose this one shift a add circle scale it down Control and P. Did I say Shift P before? I meant Control P. Select this one. You can see how this is going by now. It's very easy just to do this. Control and P. And one more down in the corner here. Shift A, circle, grab, scale, Control and P. So now I'm going to go back over to the compositor and have a look at that. So what we need to do in order to add this to the compositor is go Shift A and add in a mask where it is there. And we need to choose the mask here. So we can select the drop down and we've only got one mask and that's what, called, what we called mask. If I want to vis visualize this now, I go Control and Shift and left click and we can see our mask points that are there on the screen. And as we move the timeline around, I've got the tiny little timeline in the bottom right, you can see how they're moving around. If we want to visualize this on top of our movie clip, we could just go Shift A, add in a color mix and we'll chain we'll put this in the bottom input so that it's processed after the top input which we'll put there and we can just choose the add blending mode there and you can see how the mask is now correlating with uh, with, with what we've got 
<coughs> excuse me so what I'd also like to do is kind of feather out the edges of this we could do that in a couple of ways we could use a blur node if I go shift D on this blur and just put it here we can blur out the mask let's just visualize the mask on its own and we maybe take this down to about four something like that we can do that or or and or we can also do that in the motion tracker so if we go back to the motion tracker make sure we're in a mask mode select everything with a and you can see they're they're out of sync at the moment if i just jog the timeline they'll go back and i can press alt and s and now i can use this and this is the feathering sort of circle of influence so how much of the thing will be feathered so i'm just going to use that much feathering we'll go back to the compositor and we'll see how this has uh, has affected things i need to jog the timeline now we can see without the blur node we've got a little bit of a fall off here and i believe that that's going to just help us a little bit as well as having the blur if we if we if we need to I'd also like to have a little bit of control over the size of these guys. So shift A, add in a, I think, what I'm looking for, dilate, erode, filter, dilate, erode, there he is. So the distance setting here allows us to decrease or increase the size of our trackers. So this is giving us a nice lot of control over the blur and the size of them. So how do we make the blur only happen where this white stuff is? Well, let's get rid of that add node because that's not what we want. We want a, we do want a color and a mix. And what I want to do is mix the original image with the blurred image using the mask, this white, as a factor. Because the, the, the mask is white and black values. So black is zero and white is one. When we're mixing two images together, with a factor of zero, it's only going to be the top input. With a factor of one, it's only going to be the bottom input. So we can say wherever, wherever there's a, a value of one is when we want the bottom input. So in that case, we're going to take the blurred version of our shot and plug it to the bottom input. And we're going to take the unblurred version of our shot and plug it to the top input. Now we can see what that's doing. So, so when it's a factor of zero, we've got no blur. And when it's a factor of one, we've got all the blur. So now we can plug the mask, our black and white, into the factor here. And now we'll only get the blur where the, mar where the markers are, where the mask is. And in fact, uh, just off the bat, that's done a pretty good job, as you can see. Now, there might be certain frames where this isn't the case. So up here, for example, we can start to see it a little bit. We, this is a certain limitation. It's not going to look great in every single frame, but we can maybe increase the blur value a bit. And that's not helping too much. Let's decrease, let's, uh, uh, sorry, let's increase the size of our markers a tiny bit. Maybe go up to six of the blur. Now that's bringing it back again. Let's take that down. So that's looking a little bit better. So these are all settings that you can uh, sort of try and play with and try and get the best result on every single frame. Like I say, it's not going to be perfect, but this is a moving shot after all. So you're not going to always be able to see, you know, exactly what's uh, what, what's occurring there. We can try taking the overall blur down maybe and upping the blur here. Not, well, that's a, that might be a little bit better actually. So again, this has given us plenty of control over the over the over the functions here that we can try and get the best result possible. There's one more thing I'd just like to add. Back in the motion tracker, if we find a shot where there might be, for example, some of the background getting in. So at some point, she twists her head over. Well, actually, they're all pretty good. Uh, let's say, for example, let's just take let's take an example, and uh, I'll, sh I'll show you this one here. It might be possible that some of the blur gets into our shot, uh, our, our tracker here, and starts to show up. This is off. This is well off target. Actually, that might be one reason why it's not working so well. So let's address that. Let's press L, and we can now press G and grab, and we'll just replace the marker here. And maybe I go Alt and S and scale in these points. 
so that we don't include the hair, hairline there, press L to select everything. If I press I to insert a keyframe, that'll now insert a shape key for this particular marker. Now we can go back over here, say, and replace the, uh, the, 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 the mask here, and we can reset our feathering to out a bit. Press I and reinsert a keyframe there. You can see now how it's squishing up as we reach this frame and then at some point I'm going to have to redo that. So say over here, let's place another one on the other side. Alt and S, L and I. Now if I pr go back into tracking mode, I press L and lock the view to this tracker and then now you should be able to see how the marker is changing according to those keyframes so this gives you a lot of control over the over the possibilities here so back into the compositor let's see if that's helped us at all during these frames i don't know whether it's made much difference but i reckon this is a pretty good uh, result overall so yeah I know I went on a bit. Um, I hope this was interesting. At least you could maybe use this for all sorts of things, I'd imagine. But uh, yeah, have fun with it and I'll see you again soon.